to create this video it's an eight eight step process to how to sell to sell in your soccer training services to clients now if this is the first time you're watching our content you're watching these videos go back we've got over a thousand one thousand two hundred videos that we've created on soccer on basketball on baseball and for those that follow my videos you'll know that i uh, focus a lot more on the soccer industry essentially i am a soccer coach and i work with a lot more of the soccer soccer uh, industry coaches that want to grow and scale uh, training businesses so go back have a look we've got a ton of content there uh, for you to have a look at so eight step process to selling your training services now this is a few few of these things that, or actually the mo majority of the things that are in this uh, video today are stuff that we teach coaches in our accelerator program. Okay, so I'm going to go through them very step by step and very um, slowly. So number one is identify the type of players that you want to train with. Okay, so when you're first starting a training business, Okay, uh, it's good to narrow down the niche that you want to focus on because that just makes your marketing and your selling a lot easier. When coaches look to start businesses in this type of industry, they want to generalize to everyone. They want to have the best players in their area. They want to have beginners. They want to, they want to have everyone. But what you start to see as your business starts to grow in scale is that you start to attract cert a certain type of client and then based on that certain type of client, then you can start to grow your business. So when I started my academy, my goal was to work with players that were either starting out. So they were they were beginners. They wanted to get into soccer uh, and they wanted to develop. And I wanted to play with players that already had some experience of playing, but they weren't yet at clubs. So my goal was to help those type of players to reach the next level where they can go on and play for club teams. So I created my entire academy program around these types of players. Okay, beginner players, players that want to get into soccer, they want to develop, they want to learn. And then the other type of players that are maybe in the middle that they have some experience playing or they play with friends, but they're not yet at club teams so how can we now get them to that level where they're pushing to play at a club a club team okay the next one is unique selling proposition so once i knew who my audience was once i knew who i needed to market to now i need to figure out right how can i make my training academy unique so what can i do in order to make it very different to everyone else now that could be a number of things it could be what do you do on the field and what do you do off the field so on the field you might do a, you might focus on a specific type of training so it might be fully uh, focused on on the technical aspect and then away from the field okay you might focus on different things or offering different services to your players so your players might get one-on-one -on -one training away from group training or you might offer online uh, workshops where you you come on your players come on once a month, uh, and you guys talk about a, a topic. It could be confidence development. It could be nutrition. It could be how to get recruited to play for a pro a pro club. Right. It could be anything. It could even be offering your group training uh, players to play at showcase events where you play against local uh, professional academies. So what is your unique selling point? And what is that one thing that separates your program from everyone else in your local area? The third one is build a brand that reflects your unique selling point. So when you open your social media accounts, such as your Facebook, your Instagram, First of all, you've got to work out where your, where your target audience is. So when I opened my academy, I knew my audience was on Facebook. So I needed to create my brand on Facebook and I needed to create it in a way that reflected my coaching. So 
what you can do is you can create content there. You can create blogs, you can create videos, right? You can create newsletters where parents sub, sub, uh, register or subscribe to your newsletter and they're getting content on a regular basis talking about a specific topic. So it could be confidence. It could be how to get to the next level, uh, what your child needs to live a, a healthy lifestyle, right? It could be anything, but it has to reflect what your brand is about, okay? So anything that you do on social media or if you, if you create a blog has to reflect what your brand and what your coaching stands for, okay? You cannot, and I'll give you a very simple example, Say I was working, like, for example, I take my, my academy. If I'm working with beginners or intermediate players, I can't go and then create content that is more targeted towards pro academy players because it just, it, it doesn't align. So my content and what I'm selling, my brand has to reflect the customers that I'm working with. What problems are my customers having? that I can create content for them to consume and hopefully helps them to solve a problem and keep them engaged while they're training with me. And the fourth one, offer a range of services. Okay, I won't go to, into too much detail because if you need more help with that, reach out to us. This is something we, we help uh, our clients with, but creating different ranges of services, one-on-one -on -one training, small groups, two-on-one, uh, etc. So offering a range of services that targets specific types of clients uh, in your local uh, niche. Fifth one, demonstrate your expertise. So by demonstrating expertise means simply, right, showcasing results okay, or putting on certain events in your local area that reflects what you're good at. So again, Going back to my example, when I was targeting that specific type of player, I had to look at, right, what organizations, what schools, what clubs had the players that I wanted to work with? So what I did is I went into clubs and I said to the director, I said, I want to help out your B, your C, your D uh, level uh, teams so that I can try and help them get to the A team. Okay, because that was a problem that a lot of players at that level were trying to solve, right? How can I get to the A team? How can I get in front of my the A team coaches? Or how can I get become a better player? And a lot of the time, the coaches at these teams or the, these clubs were volunteer parents. So I'm coming in, I'm demonstrating my expertise to them. And that encouraged them to want to do something with me because of the level of expertise that I was demonstrating. That was one example. Then another one is going into schools, running events. Um, I did a free v free uh, tournament in schools. So I went in there and just ran a free event for all the kids. And I used that as well as a way of recruiting players from that event into my academy, right? But I went in there with the with the 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 focus that I was going to only see what type of players are there that I could then use in my academy and bring in to get to that next level. Okay, I wasn't trying to take the best players at at that school because most of the best players were already at club teams. I was trying to get the players that wanted to play uh, soccer. They were keen to learn. They wanted to get better, but they weren't yet at a club team. So. How can we then grab them from school, take them to my soccer training academy, get them better, and then get them into a team? Now, the sixth one, offer free trial sessions. So basically, when I first started, uh, something that I did was any parent that I spoke to, I offered them a free trial session. So this might be a free one-on-one -on -one session. This might be a free group session. So it was a way for me to get in front more parents and get parents to know, like, and trust what I do. Once I did that, once I gained a little bit more trust, then parents wanted to then do business with me and pay for my service. But at first, it was all about getting in front of parents, offering a free trial session, 
and trying to attract them into my environment where I can then help their child to get to the next level. Okay. The ne uh, seventh one, showcase your testimonials. So once you get you start getting results, even if you're working with players on a, on a free uh, basis or a short-term basis, so it might be a one-off session or it might be a trial session, okay, trying to get some testimonials from them is going to be helpful, right? So after they, they do the trial session, you can maybe text the parent and ask them, say, how did they find the trial session? Okay, and then use that as a way to showcase and create a testimonial where parents can see what your training is like. A lot of problem coaches have is that they they say to me, Leo, I don't have any testimonials because I don't have any clients yet. Okay, great. But if you're offering something for free and you're getting players to come to you to, and train with you, how can you maximize that in a way where you can create testimonials from that? Okay, and doing, you might, with the parent's permission, you might do like a, a mini video of them talking about the training session. How did you find your free trial session? And they can say, yeah, I liked it. I want to come back. Or I thought we did this really well. And you can use that as social proof for parents. Okay, another way, as I just mentioned, is text messaging, just texting parents and ask them, how, hey, Mrs. Jones, how did your son or your daughter find your, your free trial session? And they can respond, yeah, we really liked it. Uh, he was he really enjoyed this, this, and this. And you can use that text message as a testimonial, right? So there's a number of ways you can do it without having to have paid clients. It's just a way for any parent that comes across your content or your page, they want to know that you've already have experienced training and that parents that have done your training, they actually like what you do. Okay. All right. And the next one, eight is collect results and adjust a strategy. So when I talk about collecting results, it's more focused on the sales and marketing aspect, right? So if we've got to April and in February, we had 15 sales calls, we had 10 evaluation sessions, right? Now we've, we can collect that data and say, right, what's worked? in that process of time and what hasn't worked. And then we adjust the strategy to then write. Now this month, how can we do that a little bit better so we can convert more of the sales calls into a free trial session, okay? So it goes back to my experience. When I first started, it was all about getting parents to a free session with me. That's all I was trying to sell. Come to a one-on-one -on -one session, come to a group session, Okay. And then once I had them in my in my ecosystem, that's when I could then demonstrate my coaching and sell them on to being a longer term type of client. Okay, if you need more help, reach out to me. Um, and again, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content. And if you want to learn more about our coaching uh, program, description below where you'll find a link, click on the link and it'll take you to a landing page where you can apply for our program. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.